Let's talk about dangerous masculinity, taking unusual risks for love and passion that often don't make sense. So this is from the Art of Seduction book that we've been talking about. But when I think of dangerous masculinity, I think of Steve McQueen because that's what he was known for. He was known as being dangerous but kind. And he, back in the day, he used to train with Bruce Lee. He always wanted to be the best at everything he did. He started racing cars, became really good at racing cars. He loved motorcycles. And like we were talking about his uh, movie we started filming called The Great Escape, which was, I think it was 63, if I'm not mistaken, was when it was made. And so it was based on a true story in World War II where you had a bunch of um, fighter pilots of the Allies. You had the British, you had the Australians. You had um, the Americans, and so it was like the Allies that had been captured. A lot of them, their planes had been shot down and stuff. And so they actually had they escaped, and the, you know the Nazis, the Germans hunted most of them down. A lot of them were shot and killed and murdered for escaping because it, it was very embarrassing to the German uh, high command. All these guys made an escape, but I think a handful of them actually ended up getting away. And so it was interesting is. Back when this movie was made, Steve McQueen was like the, I mean, he was one of the largest, he was the top movie star in the world for like the 15, 20 years. Uh, and, you know, from the time he really made it to where he ended up passing away at a young age. But there was a scene in the movie where there was a, you know, he's running from the Nazis and there's all this barbed wire and the fencing that's all got barbed wire. You can tell it's a pretty dangerous thing. And so he's because he rode motorcycles, he raced motorcycles. I mean, he grew up on it. As he had, you know, his son had had a motorcycle that he taught him how to ride. And, and the studio was like, "We're gonna have." Uh, he's like, "Oh, I can, I can make that jump." And they're like, "No, no, no. it's like because it, the studio had all this insurance. Because if the main star of your movie gets killed on the movie or gets maimed or badly injured, that's not good for the studio." So, but he was. He was a man. He was a man's man. He's going to do what he wants. He's like, I'm going to do this stunt. And so there's this part where you got these hills that are going up and you got all this barbed wire trailing it. And then he, he gunned it. And no helmet, no nothing. Just first take. Flew right over it, made the jump. Obviously, when the studio found out about it, they were mortified and not happy. But he didn't care. He did, he did hit things his way. And so it was interesting. Like you see him in interviews, he's he's like really innocent and really boyish in the way he talked. But he was a ladies' man. It's like he he did not care if he wanted a woman. He, and even when he was married, I mean, he cheated on his wives. I don't think he cheated on his last wife. And it was interesting that he was like forty eight, forty nine, forty seven, I think, when they started dating. And she was I don't know twenty five, twenty six. This beautiful model. And there was a the documentary called um, I Am Steve McQueen, which I think is amazing and everybody should watch it. But it's really interesting. It's like these women all these years, decades later, they talk about them. Even a lot of uh, – what's her name? One of the um, former Victoria's Secret models. I can't think of her name. Marissa Miller. She was in it and they just – they all just thought he was the man. And so he embodied what dangerous masculinity was. And one of my favorite quotes – from him was I live for myself and I answer to nobody. And he absolutely lived lived by that. And that was kind of like his his creed. You know, he wanted to experience like he said, you only go around once in life and I want I, I want to grab a handful of it. And and he did. And so they, there was it was interesting the I think it was a Beverly Beverly Hills Hotel, I think it was they joked that he had an office there. So what would happen is anytime there was a new up-and-coming starlet or model in Hollywood, they'd be sent to him, and he'd end up seducing them. And he usually seduced all the leading ladies in, in his movies, And even though he was married. But I think the, the, the last marriage that he was in before he passed away was like the best one he'd ever had. And you could tell his, his widow, she loved the shit out of him. She was like, it was just effortless. We got along perfectly. And because like when you look at his... His first marriage, his first wife, they had a lot of, a lot of problems, and you know he he was abusive. He was verbally and physically abusive, but he mellowed out as he got he got older. He's terrible. Yeah, but everybody loved him. Even the women that he was was not good to, they still when they talked about him, they they still loved him and they still thought very highly of him. But you know that's what 
being dangerous but kind is all about being in other words being able to deal out violence or lethal violence when it's required but being a, like what Jordan Peterson talks about bits having that under control and you know that's that's something that's very attractive and you know when it comes to masculinity at least that women like is that they know a guy is really extremely dangerous but he's kind he's a nice person basically but, like um what do they say because i always say this i was like i'm always like i like um a guy who is mean and towards everyone else like every other girl like mean shows like he doesn't care you know kind of like he's brush, indifferent yeah brushes off but then when it comes to me he's like the littlest teddy bear teddy bear in the world and like the kindest nicest guy ever like mm-hmm. i love that but he's not gonna put up with your bullshit uh i don't know about that he'll be word. assertive and call you out when you do yeah things yeah you assertive do. but i'm just saying like when it comes to the public like they see him as this tough guy like mm-hmm. acting so bad and like scary and stuff but then when he's with me he's like like, like he's, he's misunderstood basically yeah he's like he's the sweetest guy when he was with me I've like your boyfriend i mean football is a dangerous sport mm-hmm. and he's a quarterback so he's a leader of men, and he's yeah. in great shape. He's obviously dangerous. Oh no! Somewhat dangerous. Somewhat. <laughs> he a baddie. He, he a baddie. <laughs> but he's kind to you. Kind to me, yes, always. Little teddy bear. Yeah, he's getting there. You know, I feel like it takes a while for um, guys to reach that point of vulnerability with a woman. You know, you're not going to break down that wall automatically. Like, it really takes a lot of time for a guy to get hit that soft spot. Mm-hmm. So it's getting there. I think when I think of dangerous masculinity, I think of adventurous. I mean, if you get what I mean. Like, it's good for them to be dangerous yet nice, but you can get a little adventure out of that. So. Dangerous but kind. Taking risks taking unusual risks like in his case he was married very famous but you know women just loved him and he took advantage of that he enjoyed he enjoyed himself yeah his excitement was cheating he probably thought that was so much fun no it's not cool. yeah a lot of fun <laughs> it's not cool <laughs> but he did he definitely mellowed out in the last few years of his life he found somebody that was he really jived with. And what's interesting, what's kind of sad also, is his widow, she's like, I haven't had that since. Because it was just yeah. easy and effortless. Really? That's sad. That's scary, actually. Yeah. Losing that person. Because when she, when he died, she was only like 27 or 28, I think. Oh, wow. She was still young. He was 50, I think he was 51. Mm. He was about to turn 51. Or no, he was 50 when he died. He died in 1980. That hurts. That really hurts. I mean, at least she still had a long life to meet someone else. Only 28. question is, did she actually find someone else who is just as great as him? No, Not she said him. she hasn't had that since. Yeah. I mean, she's had relationships, and but not on the level that she had with Steve McQueen. I mean, because mm-hmm. he was the man. At the time when he was alive, he was the ultimate man. He was the biggest star in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Everybody knew who, who he was. He got top billing. But he, you know, he was a man. He wasn't a big. He was like he was about my size, basically. Mm-hmm. But he was strong and he was a badass. 